If a submarine were to collide with an aircraft carrier at full speed, what would the damage be for both ships? Would the submarine survive the impact? And is it even possible for a submarine to collide with an aircraft carrier? You might think it's unlikely, but despite today's advanced navigation and communication technologies, history has already shown us that such incidents are possible. Consider, for example, past incidents where a submarine unexpectedly came into contact with a surface ship. This demonstrates that, although rare, the complexities of maritime operations and human errors can lead to unforeseen situations. Before we delve deeper into such historical events, let's first look at the collision scenario. Aircraft carriers represent the pinnacle of naval power projection, boasting immense size, firepower, and versatility. These floating airbases serve as the primary platforms for launching and recovering various aircraft, including fighter jets, reconnaissance planes, and helicopters. With their robust defensive capabilities, including advanced radar systems, missile defense systems, and escort vessels, aircraft carriers form the centerpiece of naval task forces, projecting power across vast distances and dominating the seas. Their ability to deploy air power swiftly and decisively makes them indispensable assets in modern warfare scenarios, enabling long-range strike capabilities, aerial reconnaissance, and aerial refueling operations. On the other hand, submarines, particularly nuclear-powered ones, offer unparalleled stealth and agility beneath the ocean's surface. Submarines are renowned for their ability to operate covertly, remaining undetected by adversaries while conducting a wide range of missions, including intelligence gathering, surveillance, reconnaissance, and anti-submarine warfare. Equipped with advanced sonar systems, torpedoes, and cruise missiles, submarines pose a formidable threat to enemy surface vessels and provide crucial deterrence against hostile naval forces. Their ability to dive to great depths and navigate silently through the depths of the ocean renders them elusive and difficult to counter, making them valuable assets in both defensive and defensive naval operations. Considering the sheer power and capabilities of both aircraft carriers and submarines in the U.S. Navy, a collision between these two formidable vessels would undoubtedly have catastrophic consequences. Given the disparity in size and operational characteristics between aircraft carriers and subs, opinions may vary on the extent of the damage and the subsequent impact on naval operations and strategic dynamics. The circumstances leading to a collision between a submerged sub and an aircraft carrier could arise from a variety of factors, including navigational errors, miscommunications, or technical malfunctions. In this hypothetical scenario, let's envision a situation where both vessels are operating in close proximity during a complex training exercise or a multinational naval operation. Despite the advanced technology and training of the crew, Unforeseen circumstances such as turbulent weather conditions or equipment failures could compromise situational awareness and increase the risk of a collision. Several factors would influence the impact of a collision between a submerged submarine and an aircraft carrier, including the speed, depths, and angle of the submarine's approach. The speed and maneuverability of the aircraft carrier, coupled with its sheer size and displacement, would determine the severity of the collision and the extent of structural damage. Similarly, the depth at which the sub is operating and its proximity to the surface would impact the force of impact and the potential for hull breach or flooding. Additionally, the angle of collision and the structural integrity of both vessels would influence the outcome, with the potential for catastrophic damage to critical systems and compartments. As two of the most formidable assets in the U.S. Navy's arsenal, aircraft carriers and submarines embody the strengths and capabilities of modern maritime warfare, essentially making it a pretty interesting situation if put against one another. In fact, the hypothetical scenario of a collision underscores the inherent risks and complexities associated with naval operations, highlighting the importance of robust safety protocols, advanced technology, and skilled personnel in mitigating such risks and preserving the security and stability of the maritime domain. Damage to the Carrier In the event of a collision between a submerged submarine and an aircraft carrier, the damage inflicted upon the carrier would undoubtedly be severe and multifaceted. 
Firstly, the structural damage to the hull would be a primary concern. The force of impact from the collision, especially considering the massive size and weight of both vessels involved, could cause significant deformation, fractures, or breaches in the carrier's hull. The structural damage could compromise the overall integrity of the vessel, potentially leading to hull breaches and exposing critical compartments to the ingress of seawater. The potential for flooding and the integrity of the carrier's compartments would be paramount in assessing the extent of damage and formulating a response strategy. The compartmental design of aircraft carriers is intended to mitigate the effects of flooding by containing water within specific areas to prevent widespread inundation. However, in the event of a collision-induced breach, the carrier's compartmental integrity could be compromised, ultimately leading to flooding in multiple sections of the vessel. The ingress of seawater into vital spaces such as engine rooms, command centers, and living quarters could impair operational capabilities and pose significant safety risks to personnel on board. Furthermore, the damage sustained by the flight deck and the aircraft on board the carrier could further exacerbate the operational challenges posed by the collision. The flight deck serves as the primary operational hub for launching and recovering aircraft, and any structural damage or obstruction to this critical area would severely impede flight operations. Also, the impact of the collision could result in debris scattered across the flight deck, rendering it unusable for aircraft operations. Worse, the damage to parked aircraft or those in the process of launching or landing could lead to aircraft losses and personnel casualties, further hampering the carrier's combat readiness and mission effectiveness. As you can tell, the overall impact on the carrier's operational capabilities would be profound and far-reaching. In addition to the immediate effects of structural damage, flooding, and flight deck impairment, the collision would disrupt the carrier's ability to fulfill its assigned missions and support naval operations effectively, bringing a grand impact to the U.S. Navy as a whole. The loss of critical systems such as propulsion, navigation, and communications would limit the carrier's mobility and connectivity, hindering its ability to coordinate with other units and respond to emerging threats. Moreover, the need for emergency repairs, damage assessment, and casualty evacuation would divert resources and personnel away from operational tasks, further diminishing the carrier's combat effectiveness and strategic relevance in the maritime world. Damage to the Sub in the same event, the damage inflicted upon the sub would also no doubt be significant and potentially catastrophic. The structural integrity and pressure resistance of the submarine would be put to the ultimate test, as the force of the impact from the collision could cause severe deformation, fractures, or breaches in the sub's hull. The thing is, submarines are designed to withstand high pressures encountered at depth. But the sudden and intense impact from a collision with a massive surface vessel could exceed the submarine's structural limits, leading to hull failure and compromising the vessel's ability to maintain buoyancy and watertight integrity. The potential for catastrophic failure looms large in such scenarios, particularly if the collision results in breaches to critical systems or compartments within the sub. The sudden influx of seawater into vital areas such as propulsion rooms, control centers, or crew quarters could disrupt essential functions and jeopardize the safety of the crew on board. The complex interplay of mechanical, electrical, and hydraulic systems within the sub could be compromised, further exacerbating the risk of catastrophic failure and exacerbating the challenges of damage control and emergency response. Survival chances for the crew on board the submerged submarine would depend on various factors, including the severity of the collision, the extent of damage sustained by the vessel, and the effectiveness of emergency protocols and procedures implemented by the crew. In the immediate aftermath of the collision, crew members would face a race against time to assess the extent of the damage, contain flooding, and ensure the safety of personnel on board. The confined and pressurized environment of a submerged submarine presents unique challenges for evacuation and rescue operations, as crew members must contend with limited space, dwindling resources, and the ever-present threat of further damage or catastrophic failure. Despite the inherent risks and challenges, submarines are equipped with robust safety systems and redundancy measures designed to enhance the crew's survivability in emergencies. Emergency buoyancy systems, escape hatches, and emergency breathing apparatuses are among the critical equipment on board submarines to facilitate evacuation and rescue efforts in the event of a collision 
or other catastrophic event. Moreover, the extensive training and expertise of submarine crews in damage control, firefighting, and emergency procedures are crucial factors in maximizing survival chances and mitigating the consequences of unforeseen accidents. Nevertheless, submarines remain indispensable assets in naval warfare, leveraging stealth, agility, and versatility to execute a wide range of missions and safeguard national security interests in the maritime domain. But it also goes without saying that such a collision would be relatively complicated as compared to an aircraft carrier. Comparative Analysis Speaking of which, the comparative analysis of design and construction between aircraft carriers and submarines reveals stark contrasts in their respective capabilities, functions, and survivability in the event of a collision. Aircraft carriers with their massive size, robust hulls, and extensive flight decks are engineered to project power across vast distances and support a wide range of aerial operations. Constructed using high-strength steel alloys and reinforced with multiple layers of armor, aircraft carriers prioritize durability and survivability in hostile environments. The design of aircraft carriers emphasizes the open deck space for aircraft operations, hangar bays for aircraft storage and maintenance, and command and control facilities to coordinate complex naval operations effectively. In contrast, submarines are characterized by their sleek, streamlined profiles and advanced stealth features designed to operate covertly beneath the ocean's surface. Submarines employ specialized hull designs, such as teardrop-shaped hulls and hydrodynamic fairings, to minimize hydrodynamic drag and reduce acoustic signatures, enhancing their stealth capabilities and evading detection by enemy sensors. Constructed using lightweight yet durable materials such as titanium and high-strength composites, submarines prioritize buoyancy and maneuverability in the underwater environment. The designs of submarines emphasize submerged propulsion systems, ballast tanks for buoyancy control, and sophisticated sonar arrays for navigation and target detection. In simple words, aircraft carriers, being huge and robust, possess inherent advantages in terms of structural resilience and survivability against external threats. The sheer mass and displacement of aircraft carriers afford them greater resistance to impact forces, reducing the likelihood of catastrophic damage or hull breaches in the event of a collision. Moreover, the compartmentalized design of aircraft carriers enables damage containment and compartmentalization limiting the spread of flooding and preserving critical systems and operational capabilities. Conversely, submarines, despite their stealth and agility, are inherently more vulnerable to external threats and collisions due to their confined and pressurized environment. The compact and densely packed nature of submarines leaves little room for structural reinforcement or redundancy, increasing the risk of hull failure and catastrophic flooding in the event of a collision. It's the simple fact that submarines often lack the external armor and bulkhead construction found in aircraft carriers, making them more susceptible to structural damage and compromise under the extreme forces exerted during a collision. Additionally, the confined spaces and limited access points within submarines pose challenges for damage control and emergency response, further compromising survivability in critical situations. Just imagine being in a collision while in such a tightly packed vessel. Not ideal, right? So the implications for damage and survivability in the event of a collision highlight the trade-offs and vulnerabilities inherent in each vessel's design, underscoring the complexity and risk associated with maritime operations. But hey, despite these challenges, both aircraft carriers and submarines remain indispensable assets in naval arsenals contributing to the security and stability of the maritime domain through their complementary capabilities and strategic versatility. The true prowess comes when both vessels are deployed in a parallel manner. Historical Precedents So, here's the deal. Historical precedents basically provide valuable insights into the potential outcomes and implications of submarine collisions, shedding light on the challenges and complexities inherent in underwater operations. One notable incident occurred in February of 2009, when the French nuclear submarine Le Triomphant collided with the British submarine HMS Vanguard in the Atlantic Ocean. The collision, described as a glancing blow between the two submarines, 
raised concerns about the safety and coordination of naval operations in international waters. Despite the collision occurring at low speeds and resulting in no injuries or fatalities, it underscores the risks and vulnerabilities associated with submerged navigation and the need for enhanced communication and situational awareness among naval forces. Another historical precedent is the collision between the USS Greenville, a Los Angeles-class submarine, and the Japanese fishing vessel Ehimi Maru off the coast of Hawaii in February of 2001. The incident, which occurred during a demonstration for civilian guests on board the USS Greenville, resulted in the tragic loss of nine crew members on board the Ahime Maru, including four high school students. These past events bear relevance to the hypothetical scenario of a collision between a submerged sub and an aircraft carrier in the U.S. Navy. While each incident has its unique circumstances and contributing factors, they collectively underscore the inherent risks and complexities associated with underwater navigation and maritime operations. The collision between Le Triomphant and HMS Vanguard highlights the potential for miscommunication and miscalculation during joint naval exercises, especially in crowded and congested maritime environments. Similarly, the collision involving the USS Greenville and the Hime Maru underscores the importance of effective training, situational awareness, and adherence to established protocols in mitigating the risks of collisions and minimizing the loss of life. In our hypothetical scenario of a collision between a submerged sub and an aircraft carrier, the lessons learned from past incidents offer valuable insights into the potential consequences and mitigating factors. The need for enhanced communication, coordination, and vigilance among naval personnel is paramount to prevent accidents and ensure the safety of all vessels operating nearby. Moreover, the importance of robust safety protocols, emergency procedures, and crew training cannot be overstated in mitigating the risks of collisions and minimizing the impact on personnel and assets. Do you know of any other incidents where a sub and a carrier collided? What was the outcome of that? Be sure to share it with all of us in the comments below. So in the context of suffering less damage in a collision between a submerged sub and an aircraft carrier, it's challenging to definitively determine a winner due to the multitude of factors at play. But at least we now understand that there are tons of factors that dictate the outcome of such a collision. Now let me ask you the question. In a random scenario where a U.S. Navy sub crashes into a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier at full speed, which vessel would suffer from more damage? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, we kindly ask you to show your support by giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. Your support means a lot to us and motivates us to continue creating entertaining and educational content on the Navy and other maritime topics. Don't forget to click the bell icon to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video. We look forward to bringing you more exciting content in the future. See you in the next one.